Hey, how you doing gamers? Thanks very much for tuning into The Den. And this is a short series of videos that I've been asked to produce to give people some advice and guidance on how to go about painting the miniatures and uh, hopefully uh, people will find this of use. Now we've got to say one thing for a disclaimer, I am not a professional painter. It's as simple as that and there is loads of videos out there on YouTube about how to do professional painting but I thought I'd give my spin on it. Uh, many people have said that they like what the style that I do and I thought okay for many of you you may be waiting for one of these. Okay so this is the uh, Gloomhaven collection box that's uh, got all the scenery um, in it and as you know if you looked at the unboxing it's going to be full of Two bags of scenery, absolutely overwhelming amount of scenery. And for many people, they've never done any painting before and want some hints and some tips and how to go forward. And you don't really need a great deal of stuff to enhance that scenery because if you look at the reviews and things like that, everybody who's had scenery for games never looks back at the cardboard stuff. It adds a new dimension, new fun, new playability, and everybody loves to pimp their game. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. And in addition to that, uh, you know, it's it's your personal touch. It's your personal bit of the game that you're putting in there. And I think that's what's more important to me. When I play the games and I look at my own scenery in there, I get a connection with it. And that's what it's all about, okay? But like I say, not a professional, so don't judge me too harshly. Okay, so the first little quick video that we're going to do is about uh, what bits and pieces I've got, what do you need, you know, some ideas and things like that, and then in the in future episodes we'll be going through uh, breaking the items down and, and, and showing here how to uh, to do some scenery on there and some paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the camera around so we can look at the workstation, show you the bits and pieces, and I'm going to chat through your basic items that you're going to need to get hold of, and let's have them paintbrushes ready. Okay, to start with folks, as you can see I've got a decent sized work area which extends down to the end and it's a little bit junked up at the moment. I do apologise for that. I have a number of um, jobs on the go at the moment, a number of projects on the go and one of them, if uh, some people may have been eagerly eyed, is the uh, is the U-boat for the new U-boat game. If you're not already uh, uh, into that, that's going to be the replacement for the cardboard. Um, but uh, still quite a bit of design things to go on there. Anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, so work area. How much space do you need? As much space as you can get hold of, really. But there's no problem putting everything in a small box and using a little corner table. But what I would say is do it somewhere that's quiet as best you can and out of the way and well lit. You do need it well lit. As you see, we've got two big lamps going on here. I'm in an attic here and some big skylights. But lighting is really key important to uh, when you're doing your painting and so on. So, um, certainly suitable mats, if uh, at all possible. I want to talk through the stuff I've got, and it's entirely up to you guys um, how much of it you want. Now, as you can see, we've got some of the big sort of, these are the cutting boards. So this is what photographers use um, for when they're, they used to cut and trim photos. Um, and it, it's sort of a self repairing material. Now that comes really handy. These are a couple of pieces I had lying around and I put those on there. So um, a good base, like I say, well lit and everything like that. So the first thing that you're going to uh, be looking at getting hold of and pondering over is brushes. Brushes. They range from the ridiculous cost to very very cheap and it's really one of those I do not spend a lot of money. Games Workshop brushes can be quite expensive, army painter brushes I've got in kits and so on and yes they are really nice but from a scenery point of view you know I got these this black set here and I forget how many it was in there's like 24 brushes and it was on Amazon and they are really really good and they're about 12 13 pounds they were really inexpensive for scenery um, the other types of brushes i will have there in the pot at the moment is just some sort of cheapy cheapy brushes 
Um, not cheapy cheapy that the filaments fall out within one coating but don't go overly expensive on those so really brushes are are a personal thing if you're painting miniatures and you want that fine detail you want a really good bristle then yes you're going to invest in that but if you're just stopping at painting the scenery for the moment don't go mad on paint brushes they can be really really expensive and like i say there's quite a few nice little kits as it were on uh, on amazon for your brushes okay so um always a bowl of contention with brushes okay some of the other things that you might want to get hold of i always have a, a number of uh, bits of um uh, fomex card lying around um i can put models on and the idea being is i can get some i always have a bit of blue tack and i can just very simply um put that blue tack on there just let me get something for you oh not the camera there sorry about that if it gave somebody a bit of a thing but i can actually put my part on there yeah and i've now i've got a nice little handle yeah which i can then paint round and get the detail and stuff the other way of doing that is to get yourself now i used to use corks years ago but then i found a broom handle and i just chopped the broom handle up and literally put that i mean this is a bit disjointed there with blue tack on there now i know you can't rest it down so but you can put two on okay so we've got those little things and that just gives you a little handle there you can buy handles i know but you know why why pay out if you don't have to okay so i would say definitely um these these you need for painting because you can put your uh, your pieces on okay and i think there's one on here we've just finished off as you can see that will sit on there quite nicely and i can go around and put more detail on if i want so those are a key thing so you'd be very handy and you can just chop up broom handles or do whatever you want really um bits of dowel and things like that jars lots of jars i've got jars for brushes i've got jars for bits of stirring sticks these were barbecue sticks but you'd be surprised how they can suddenly come in handy i got jars for for, for the water yeah little pot containers sometimes you get these little pot containers that uh, either come with kits or things like that so you keep your eye on those little yogurt pot containers as well always have a few little containers why because when you're mixing down paint if you're doing a, a large thing you're going to want to squeeze it out water it down you might even tint it up with another color and so on and they just come in handy and they're quite disposable as well so uh, little uh, pots on there some of the other things you're going to need is some super glue okay so um you might find that uh, i mean the pieces that come in the sets are generally all one piece but you know you can't be away with a little bit of super glue i've used this mitre fast stuff which essentially is an activator so you can uh, use that on squeeze that on after and it's it seals it straight away so we haven't got any drying time for there okay now the paints probably see them over in the background now paints paints oh once again they're like brushes they range from the stupid price to the really cheap cheap price and for me for paint i don't have a preference now i'm painting scenery and bits and pieces and i'm sure there's people out there who are going to go oh my god you've got to get these paints you've got to get those paints they're the most amazing <sighs> not for me okay i will buy whatever's going on in the craft shop and at the moment, we uh, there's the deco art thing. So you've got these sort of big uh, containers of paint there. You can get those pretty cheaply on there. I don't go, provided they're a nice uh, sort of acrylic. Um, I've got army painter going up there. I've got Vallejo. I've been looking around. I will go to bargain bins in craft shops. One thing I did avoid um, picking up was like the artist paint. That's like in a really strange tube. Yeah, I didn't, you know, I've never really got to that i don't know if it's a different blend mix but I, I got a couple of tubes one time probably because it was like cheap and um effectively um i couldn't mix it down properly so uh, anyway just be aware so you really want this sort of craft this uh, crafters paint i mean i know people from around the world will be watching this is crafters acrylic and, and so on and so forth okay so choice of paints well you know stick with some basic colors at the moment you're not going to need the reds and you know i mean get your primary colors you know your reds your blues 
yeah, your yellows, your black, your white, you know, I mean, really, those colours, your primary colours, you can then just mix down into whatever you wanted, really. You don't have to go out of a limb, but generally, um, uh, scenery, you, you're talking about, you know, your browns, your blacks, your greys, a couple of different tones of grey. I mean, it all depends on how big you want the collection. So, you know, with your black and your grey, you can upscale it to get your base colour down and, and uh, your highlights on top so we're really not uh, looking too much on that I mean just one idea is these are old Humbrol paints and I was in the bargain uh, bargain bins of the uh, local model shop and they were sort of giving these away I think they were going out for 10p or something like that and I mean they're just great to have in the collection so it's pretty inexpensive um, picking up those some other things you uh, might find handy is uh, these are little draper grips okay so they're little little pincer grips there so they can they can come in really handy when you're looking at uh, uh, you know pinning a, an item together uh, for painting I wouldn't really use them for thing for actual uh, you know holding in uh, there for, for painting and so on but they can come in handy if they like, say you're basing um, so in the case of this you know that's a really good little thing there so I can put my uh, base material on because these will get dressed uh, along with being painted of course uh, they will need a dressing as well so these can be really inexpensive as well little sort of pinch grips you'll find those useful uh, some of the other things you're going to need on the workbench as well especially if you're uh, dressing the scenery and what I mean by dressing is by putting the sand pebbles and little foliage on the uh, on the item uh, wood glue okay we uh, call it PVA here in the UK it's wood glue it could be universal glue but it's the uh, the, the yeah the PVA glue all right so uh, that's you always keep a container of that lying around so that will be for that um, some of the more exotic oh yes CDs old CDs got a stack of these okay um, these were, you know, in the days when we used to write to CD, okay. Now, why do we use them for? The actor's palettes, as you can see. I can do my mixing on there and I can, I can do everything. And you know, you're going to get a fair bit. I mean, this is coming to the end of its life now. In which case, I'll turn it over and use the other side. So it's just for mixing our little area. So get yourselves on some CDs. I'm sure plenty of people have got these lying around. In fact, you'll probably pick up these in bargain stores now for like, a quid or a dollar a piece you know not a piece like you know you'll get 50 or something like that so but I've used up ones that have already used up things so they're a really good thing to have a little palette mixer now I know that some sets come with palette mixers and things but you know why why reinvent the wheel well you know why go and spend um, I always like to have a little couple of well this is a little sorry, a couple of little pots around as well now this has got P, PVA because I've just been doing some um, uh, it's a basin um, just a moment so that's why I'm going to stick my finger in and it's uh, full of uh, PVA glue um, some of these little ceramic pots are great because when that dries off I can get underneath and strip it out and throw it away so they're really good for mixing so really you know it's going through the cupboards and coming up with any little pots and bits and pieces that you can find don't go out and buy specific stuff or stuff that people, you know, say, oh, these are painting pots and things. You can make do with stuff you've got in the home so inexpensively. It's ridiculous. And once again, I showed you a huge bunch of brushes there. You know, you know, a, a small detail brush and a good size brush and a, another. In fact, I used to use um, uh, makeup brushes, like small, small stubby makeup brushes. Uh, that my wife and daughter perhaps are throwing out and that will be my uh, dry coating brush uh, for some time so you know keep your eye out for those sort of things so those are saving saving money on there some of the more exotic equipment we have is airbrushes okay airbrush kits do you need them <sighs> do you know what I hardly ever use it I really don't use it that much uh, very rarely I, I just find the amount of stuff that I'm doing is, qu is is quick by hand and you know going through the process of cleaning it out and doing everything like that so would I recommend an airbrush I don't use one I mean some people swear by them but I'm not airbrushing that much I'm not really into it that much so I'm not looking for detail but you do get a different finish and some of the finishes for the people who can really use an airbrush 
Um, but there's a bit of setup time, there's a bit of faffing, there's a bit of, you know, if you're going to go into that, you're going into this because it's specifically what you want to do is airbrushing. But do you need it? No. And base coating, that's the coat of paint that we put on at the start of any model. Um, I always brush coat. Now you can get sprays, okay, so you can get canned sprays from your local car shop, which will be acrylics and so on, and a lot of the time the bargain bin places have them as well. It's one of them. I mean, I can, I can just as, for me personally, I can quickly hand paint, base coat all the pieces I need, but I do appreciate if you've got a vast amount of parts that you want to, uh, base coat then uh, spray painting is uh, taking it outside and spray painting it is one quick way of at least getting quite a bit of and then you can always go over the top of it and just finish it off you know with another top coat of uh, base uh, for that so uh, there are car paints but for the time being without complicating the issue unless you you know I'd, I'd just say just get yourself some black paint or grey paint or whatever it is that you're going to base with and and paint with that so the other thing, lighting, okay, very well lit area. This is an old lamp that I had lying around. It's been absolutely great. I've got a little magnifier set up here. You can you can get these pretty inexpensive as another sort of thing. And this has got some little helping hands on, which are used quite a bit, especially if I've got some uh, other little bits that go in this tray. This is something that somebody got me for Christmas, which I thought was pretty cool. And it's a little sort of cut out tray and in each one, you get this little stalk with a little crocodile clip on the end, which is pretty cool. And that will sit in there, so a small part can go in there. It's got a little cap off there. So they're pretty cool on there. Um, alternatively, you can put those in there and you can be looking at, and that's really for looking at fine detail and stuff. So, But that's really when we're coming down to painting miniatures and stuff and moving on to fine detail. But lighting, where if you can get a small lamp, you can buy some pretty inexpensive lamps, small lamps, and I would say that that was it. So some of the other things that you need lying around are, there we go, <clears throat> knives. Okay, um, I've got a sort of a, a Stanley knife, holding Stanley knife there, tweezers. Now my wife works at a hospital and apparently these tweezers, which are like fantastic, are, bro are kits that are opened, you know, when somebody goes in, like with a big splinter, they've got to pull something out, a bit of glass out of their hands or whatever it is, and they will use these kits. Okay, but what they do then is they throw them away. Now, obviously that's a bit of a waste, but of course, don't forget, it is a, uh, they are sharps and, and things like that, but uh, you can pick up tweezers. Um, I was having <laughs> this odd screwdriver lying around, sort of just a blunt thing, basically to help open lids on pots of paints. Um, I've got a big set of these, but uh, a file, a small file. Okay, small modelling file. It comes in handy, a little bit of emery paper. There can be a little bit of clean up to some models and things that you get, so you need the ability to sort of just give it a little bit of a shave down. And you don't want anything too, too coarse, because uh, if you're working on some detail, then you don't want to mix that off. Little pair of tweezers again. These amazing. These come in so handy with a really sharp end. It's because when you haven't opened a paint pot for a while, it'll sort of dry off the end. And you can actually poke it in. Um, little Axto knife. There yeah, once again. Little sort of uses for scraping off and things. So a few little bits of hardware that you need lying around. I mean, I have all sorts of other bits and pieces, but of course you've got to be careful, safety conscious, and that sort of stuff. So a couple of other things in the paint selection. Uh, washes so you certainly need some washes now army painter do a selection of the uh, the, the shaders as they call them um, they're in the red tops I would get a deep shade and a mid shade to start with but they also do this quick shade which is a dip quick shade now this is really good however it does dry shiny it's like a gloss paint as it were but that will um, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't really used this on on uh, on scenery mainly because it dries very shiny, um, which is okay. But then you're gonna have to dry brush the shininess out. So um, from a scenery point of view, not it wasn't for me, but I have it because uh, for, it's good for miniatures and things like that, which you, you don't mind using it on. Um, some plastic glue. It's always handy to have some plastic glue around alongside your. Um, super glues 
And what else? What else? What else? Oh, yes. Now, some specialist bits and pieces. So this is X, 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 T, XTC 3D. So this is a coating, brush on coating for 3D parts. Sometimes when you get some 3D parts, they, you know, you can't help but see the print layers. They're not, you know, it all depends on what it is. If it's a very, it's like in the picture here, it's got a skull on it. So the 3D part will, you can you're very distinctive see the layers and you can use this to uh, treat uh, those 3D layers and it basically smooths it out. Does it need it for this scenery collection? No, it doesn't. Um, I can say that pretty much. Other extras you can get if you're really pushing the boat out. Vallejo do some water texture, uh, squeezy. So if it's a very clear acrylic and in the case of a fountain, you can pour that into the fountain. It will dry down, so 50% at least of its volume will, will, will dry down. And then you can pour some more on and pour some more on. And it just gives it that water effect and it's very, very, uh, very, very effective. To top that, uh, you've got this Vajo uh, water texture. So if you've got it where you've got sort of little waves and things like that, you've got a sort of a foamy texture. Uh, stuff that you can put on there so we you can go on all day about adding all the extras and bits and pieces in there um, and once again without a clear guidance you know like I say get some primary colors in mix them up keep your brushes you know you can get them but then as you get more space or you get you know the bug you're gonna start buying into other bits and pieces but one of the things that I do um, suggest that you do invest in and that is as he gets bits and pieces out and adds to a drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. Now this is, let me just move these out of the way. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Oh, keep some light on the matter. Okay, you heard me talk about dressing the scenery and that is the ability to put like grass and ferns and little bushes and flowers and things like that and they are so key key important to the look of your scenery for my view now you can buy all these as you can see you've got a big box i sort of put them in their own little little bags of uh of, of moss and all that sort of stuff but it doesn't stop there you can then get yourself a whole big selection of different plants and these are really inexpensive and you get hundreds for a couple of quid, which so it's, it's, it's not expensive. Some of the, so that is well worth, and there's lots of places on Amazon that will do you like a starter kit. So you won't need all this, you don't, I mean, I've got a lot of it, obviously, but you do not need a huge amount. I mean, if we look at what I've got there, and then I've got this one here. This is like full of sands and things like the different grain is sands and more foliage. But one of the other things which I'll get out, which I was really, I got this for I got this for Christmas. Now these were on um, these were on Amazon. Look at that! Look at the size of that pot. And if we open it up, we have got. He says as he opens this one up, and it's not coming apart. Wee! Look at that! It's all got caught in things. But all these different sands and things absolutely fantastic so we've got all that there and these i mean i forget how much i think it was about 20 pounds but you've got so many vibrant colors and textures and well i mean that was a that's a black and black and there's just so much here and they're about 20 pounds but the problem that you have is where do you store them okay so i'm a very fortunate thing but there's you know think about your um scenery and it does lend itself to being dressed as well it's not the end of the world you can always go back and do it again all right but for the moment um that would be nice and i think i showed you on that one i don't know if that will come out if it's but i've just dressed that very slightly so this is some of the new scenery walls that i'm putting together and just painting up the samples at the moment so there we go Okay, so that's basically it. Like I say, you will add bits and pieces to your own flavour, but realistically, if you can get yourself a little toolbox, you can put some little bits of scenery stuff in there, some glues, some simple brushes, 
some, don't go down, I keep going back to the brushes, some tweezers, some bits and bobs and things like that, and that is, you are then good to go. And uh, obviously if you've got a, a very lucky like me, where I've got a huge dedicated space, fantastic. If you haven't, you can easily go and sit on a table. But, you know, it's um, it's about it's about you and it's about how you want to uh, to do your scenery and so on. So, next video in the series is we're going to be talking through and showing you um, some little tips and tactics on that. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe as I'm sure there's will be plenty more of this nonsense. If you're interested in the scenery collection or want more information, I'll put a link at the end of this video, but uh, it's up there on uh, Etsy at the moment um, for the whole Gloomhaven scenery thing, as it were. Uh, have a look on that. We've got plenty of other videos on the channel that will talk you through it. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. Um, and have them paints ready. Take care now. Bye-bye.